Hello everybody, I'm Gloria Copeland and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. We got some more good money news. <laughs> we got some prosperity going here. We got, pro that Pastor George, he's a prosperity man. Prosperity Pearsons is here today to help us. Well, Gloria, I am so excited about being with you here. You know, I'm glad to have you. I, I enjoy the preparation part of this, but I really enjoy coming in here and and being in a position to hear what you have to say about it. Well, <clears throat> so, I'm looking forward to listening <laughs> to you too. We are we are going to be talking about a, a topic that was born a long time ago when when this topic first took place, and I'll, I'll get into the details about it here in just a moment, but it was actually at your house where this, this series was born, and it was many years ago. Uh, bulldog faith. Bulldog faith is what you and I are going to be talking about these next good. two weeks. It's so exciting. I'm so excited about this. I'm eager to be reminded <clears throat> of the story. We are, we are in a time, Gloria, where... So much is going on around here in the ministry. We're believing for so many different things. Our faith needs to come up to the next level. And it can come up to the next level. I mean, Jesus talked about little faith. He talked about no faith. Then there was a place great where he faith. talked about great faith. Yes. And I like, in it, when you look up the word great, uh, in the Greek, it is the word mega. Mega. Mega, mega faith. faith. So oh we God. are... We are developing our faith up to the mega faith level Amen. to where we are able to receive everything that God wants us to have. And I so <clears throat> I want to talk about this bulldog faith. By the way, all of these outlines are available to you. All you have to do is go to kcm.org and you can click on there and you can go to all of the outlines. Actually, Gloria, all of the outlines that you and I have done over these last How six many years. Would that be? 241. <laughs> this is day 241 oh. of our prosperity broadcast. Mm -mm -mm. 241 broadcasts, and every one of the outlines are available to you Praise on kcm.org. Isn't that exciting? That's awesome. That's and awesome. And so <clears throat> that's, that is something that we want to make available. And I want to start this series off with looking at this scripture in Luke 22. Let's take a look at Luke 22. It says here in verse 31, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you like wheat. I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Here, <clears throat> we're, we're seeing this scripture. When it says here, the, the devil's plan is to sift us. That word sift there, Gloria, it means to separate to break into pieces, to shake, shocking, to shatter, and to discourage. And <clears throat> there's a... Wow, that's that quite, sifting, a, quite a definition. It really is. And that sifting is an inward agitation to try one's faith to the verge of overflow. So the plan of the devil is to try to drain us sure. and to discourage us and to to weaken and beat to... Beat us, whip us. Yeah, beat us, whip us, wear down our faith. And he does that through continual pressure, through disappointments, lies. through discouragement, lies. Always big on lies. Lies of the devil. And really what he wants us to do, Gloria... You know what? Think about this, George. Yeah, tell me. Don't let me mess you up. No, no, I'm good. There is no truth in him. So when he lies to you, you know it's a lie. <laughs> you know it's a lie. And you don't you give know it's a lie. To it. That's right. That's what he does. That's right. So when he tries to discourage us about something, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. You lying dude. Yeah. <laughs> you lying devil. That's what uh -huh. he is. <clears throat> well. Okay, we got him pegged. He wants us, Gloria, to back down from using our faith. Well, he wants course. us to back away. So he can have control. So he can he take wants control. control. It's all about control with the devil. He wants control. That's right. And he that's can only right. have control if you let him have it. Yeah, that's exactly that's right. That's why he has to lie. If it was the truth, it wouldn't be a lie. And if he can figure out some way for us to lay down our faith, yeah. to quit. not believe to God, quit. and to quit, give up, 
And you know, through the years, this is, this is my 40th year with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. 40 oh, years. You. you should get a prize. The, the, <laughs> the, the ministry was nine years old when I came on board. We had 12 people on staff, 12 people on staff when I first showed up. And I have seen so many different things through these years. And okay, I've seen... it was nine years old. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And now... It's 49 years old. It's 49 years yeah. old. We're headed for 50 years next year. Jubilee. Jubilee year. Hallelujah. But I've watched through the years so many opportunities for the devil to try to discourage you and Kenneth about really laying down your faith, backing off of things when the finances would get tough, mm -hmm. when <clears throat> things would happen. That's called opportunity to <laughs> fail. That's right. That's a faith opportunity right there. It's a failure of, if it's a fa it's a failure opportunity, it's a faith opportunity. Yep. And you get to choose. And I have watched you and Kenneth through these years. The devil tried to sift you and he couldn't do it. Could not do it. And that's why here we are today, all of these years later, we're still producing the gospel. It's still going out there. This time it's going out on a much broader scale being on dish television, yep. every available voice. You did not quit and lay down your faith, but I want to tell you something. There are so many that are watching us right now that the devil is trying to get you to lay down your faith and get you to quit, and that's what, that's what these two weeks with Glory and Me is all about. That's right. You are not going to quit. You're not going to lay down your faith. Oh, no, you you're can't. You're going to keep on going. You're going to keep on believing God. You're going to keep on standing and you're going to see those debts dissolve. You're going to see those, you're going to see that financial situation dissipate before you. You're going to see that IRS situation bow its knee. That's right. We are not going, you're not going to let the devil take over your life. This is the victory that overcomes the world. This, that's it, Even Gloria. Even our Faith. Even our faith. And this is the way, this is the way I'll say that scripture during these broadcasts. It, it, this is the victory that overcomes the world and every situation in it, even right. our bulldog faith. Bulldog faith. Bulldog faith. And that's what Gloria and I are talking about. And let me, let me just share with you, Gloria. I faith was in. It does not let go. It doesn't let go. Right. It doesn't let go. A bulldog, I did a lot of study about bulldogs. <laughs> and bulldogs, their, their jaw extends. Their noses are indented. Yeah, and they are. The reason for that is that they can bite down on something and keep breathing. Oh, George. Until it belongs you to them. You got something good there. So we have, we have to get to that place where you bite down on the word and you keep breathing and you keep standing, and yeah. you keep believing, and don't... And we've had to do that a lot of times. Yes, ma'am. I've seen it. I've watched it. And I'll tell you something. The thing that so inspires me about Kenneth and Gloria, and I'll, <clears throat> if I could, if you were to ask me, Pastor George, what have you learned from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland over all these years? Give me one thing that you've learned from them. I would say one thing that you've taught me is how to take the Word of God, stand on it, walk it out to victory, not give up, not quit, and use your faith. You guys have taught up. me how to use my faith. Praise God. It's and worked I, too. It you? has worked. It has worked. But the devil tries to sift us and discourage us with the different situations that go on. And Gloria, <clears throat> that's the position that well, I was what in. what does he do? What Excuse can me, he do? Didn't mean to kick he you can't do it. anything but lie. <clears throat> right. And if he can make you believe right. the lie, Right. then he can get success. And there was a lie that he was trying to get me to believe in 2002. It was the year, let me, and this is where this series was born. <laughs> let, me, let me share this with you. Okay. Um, in, in 2002, we were over, living in another part of town. We sold the house over there and we had to move four times that year. We moved, we moved out of the house that we were, we moved out of the house that we were living in. We moved into an apartment for a month because the, the house that we wanted to move into, we were renovating and we thought, we thought we were going to get into it sooner. So we moved from the house that we sold to an apartment for a month. We were in that apartment for a month and then we moved to another house, a rent house. And that rent house was so bad, it turned out to be, it was a faulty septic system and the, <clears throat> the fumes were coming up in through the house. Mm. And 
it was so bad one night, and Terry kept saying, we, can need, we gotta get out of here, we gotta get out of here. And I'm like, well, let's give it another day, we'll give it another day. And it was on a Saturday night, Terry and I were in bed, and we literally pulled the covers up over us because it was so bad. And we're under the covers, and I said to Terry, let's get out of here now. <laughs> so we, what we did, that's Gloria. That's what hotels are for. That's what, well, the only thing we can think of at 10 o'clock that night was your house. <laughs> Did you come to my house? Yeah, we did. Well, I'm you, glad. You and Kenneth were on the road somewhere and you're coming home the next day. You never know who's coming to see you while you're gone. And <laughs> we just we just moved into your house and we were with you for six weeks until we could find another place to live. And you were so gracious to us. Uh, Jeremy was out of the house by that time. Aubrey was with us. She was still in high school. She had one of the rooms. Uh, Terry and I had the, the room right next to the kitchen down there. And I gotta tell you, I was so frustrated because I, with all of the moves that we made, I got to that place where the devil was just trying to drain me of my faith. And I'm laying in bed <clears throat> that first night and Terry, she's thrilled to be there. Beautiful home, soft bed, just <laughs> great to be there. I'm laying there, I am so frustrated. I am. I, I took my fist like this and I pounded it on the. <laughs> excuse me. I pounded it on the bed <laughs> because I said I'm 49 years old and I'm living with my in-laws. <laughs> my mother-in-law. <laughs> with my mother-in-law. <laughs> and, and Terry was like, she said, "This is the first piece that we've had in about two months here. Let me enjoy Would you it." Shut up. <laughs> huh. Where? What, which house was it? Now this, the, the house. The old one. No, no, the, 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 the new, new one, one. The new house. <clears throat> and we were, we were in the room, off to the sunroom. And, oh, yeah. And so the next day we had to get up. We went to church, took care of church, got home. And I was just, I was just frustrated, Gloria. I was just frustrated with the whole thing. And I could tell that my attitude was slipping, and it was slipping bad. That's no time to let, have an it attitude. Was, it was not good attitude at still. all. And I'll tell you, there's a little desk in that room that we were staying in. And I was sitting there and I just sat at that desk and I just began to pray. And the Lord began to talk to me and he started to, to sh literally shake me out of that complacency. And Gloria, <clears throat> this is what he said, I'll read this to you. Okay. He, <clears throat> he, he began to minister to me and as I have it in the notes here, he really let me have it. I mean, he really, really let me have it. And I sat down at this desk, I began to pray, and I took, I took a little notepad that you had. And this, this notepad, Gloria, I'm gonna give this to you. This is a copy of what I wrote in the notepad. And the, these things that I wrote on this paper was the birth of what we're talking about today in this series, in these two weeks. He started talking to me, and at the very top, you can see a box yeah. that I had up there. And I don't know if you remember this notepad. It had a little bumblebee on it. I don't. <clears throat> but you just had a notepad sitting there, and I started writing, and the Lord started talking to me. And he said, I want you to get more aggressive about your faith. That is a key right there. Laid back faith is slow. <laughs> We need aggressive faith. <laughs> Laid back slave faith, faith is, is slow. slow. It is. And the Lord said to me, my attitude was not very good. It was really slipping. And the devil was trying to sift me. Yeah. And he said, I want you to get more aggressive about your faith. And I believe this is a word for you right now. Mm -hmm. In these two weeks together, Gloria and I are going to be teaching you how to walk in an aggressive faith. We're going to be teaching you how to walk in a bulldog faith. And Gloria, these notes that you see on this little pad of paper here, the, this, I took all of this and that's what we are going to be talking okay, about good. in these, these two weeks. And You're not Lord, aggressive toward the Lord. No, no. You're aggressive toward the circumstances. The, the circumstance, exactly. And you've got exactly. aggressive faith. We're going after this. We're yes. going after yep. it. Yep, we're going to take it. You're not laid back. Yeah. You're, you, you've decided we're going to have this. We stand on the scripture. We're going to take it. That's it, Gloria. That's it. And that's exactly, and that's that's what, exactly says, what happened. Take it. And when the Lord said that to me, and I, I wrote down all of those notes, uh, and I'll tell you something else that I wrote down. If you want to go to your second page there, 
God had a halftime locker room talk with Pastor George. That's how I describe it. <laughs> and Gloria, I wrote it all down here. I want, I want to share oh, it with good. everybody. Okay, I want to hear it. <clears throat> Yeah, he had a locker. This is what happened in the locker room. This is what happened in the locker room at halftime when I oh. was just so dejected and we seemed to be losing and couldn't get a grip on things and were frustrated. Now, I was, Terry was just glad to be at your house, but I was just frustrated with the whole thing. And listen to what the Lord said to me. And again, these are available to you online or you can get the package that we're offering. I want you to have every bit of this yes. because I know, Gloria, there are works. people out there that are struggling right now with their faith. But this is what the Lord said to me. And go to the, let's see, the second page on, uh, on this one here. Go to the second page on that one. <clears throat> this is the halftime locker room talk. Okay. He Bulldog. said, yeah, okay. there we go. George, I'm going to get after you about your sorry attitude. You're letting the devil beat you up out there. And I want you to listen to this right now as if, <laughs> as if God were talking to you. I'm not sure I say an ugly word oh, there. No. That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> Attitude. No. Attitude. Okay. Yes. So take this right now. I'm getting after you about your sorry attitude. You're letting the devil beat you up out there. Get a hold of yourself and get this straightened out. I want you to Amen. answer these questions right now. Are you maintaining or are you pursuing? Oh, that's good. Are you dry docked or are you launching out into the deep? Are you, are you just holding the fort or are you taking new yes, ground? Yes, we're taking new Are you ground. settled into the status quo? Are you reaching up to the next level? Are you throwing in the towel or going in for the next round? Are you passive or pressing? Are you surviving or thriving? Are you circling the wagons or leading the charge? Are you behind the eight ball or are you staying ahead of the curve? Are you protecting what little you have or are you aggressively possessing all that rightfully belongs to you? Good stuff. That's what the Lord's saying to me. Hey. That is good, George. He said then, he said, well, what is it? Are you going to back down and lose? No. Or are you going to get up on your We're bulldog faith the, and what win? What is it we're supposed to do? Fight the fight. The good fight. Fight the good fight. The good fight because you fight win. The, for, forgive me if I'm yelling in here. Fight I'm not yelling at you. Fight. I'm excited about this. <clears throat> he said, are you going to get back up on your bulldog faith and win? And then this is the instruction the Lord gave me. And this is what he's giving you. I want you to get more aggressive about taking That's what is good. rightfully yours in That's Christ. Good. I want you to aggressively reach out with your faith and take what you need, command it to come, demand it to come. He said, I want you to become more aggressive with your faith. He said, then now put your helmet back on, get back out on the field and go fight and win. Amen. And that's Amen. what the Lord did with me, Gloria. That's what he did with me in that, in that guest room that you have at your house. You know, every so often when we come over and visit with you and Kenneth, uh, and, and there have been times when we've sat in the sunroom next to it, yeah. there are times when I'll just walk up and I'll go into that room and I'll look at that desk. Remember the battle. That's what, that's, I have not come down since that day. Praise God. I have not, I have remembered that day as a memorial and what God said to me about getting on my Aggressive. bulldog faith. Yes. And, and that everything, is true, everything that I wrote down at that desk that day, we're covering in these broadcasts. We, we, we are expounding on everything that God said to me. And the scripture that He gave me, and we'll, this will be the last scripture. We don't have any time after this, but look at this glory in Hebrews 10, 38 and 39. This is a picture of who you are. Yep. This is a picture of who you are becoming. Listen to this. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul mm -hmm. shall have no pleasure That's in right. him. Well, the reason, God takes pleasure in our prosperity. That's, right. That's what Psalm 37, 27 says. God takes pleasure in the prosperity yeah, of, of his, his servants. People. But the wonderful things, the things that God has given us, blessed us with so wonderfully by his grace, we have to take it with our faith. That's right. We have to be aggressive about it in our faith. That's absolutely true. And it says here, <clears throat> now the just Why shall live by that? faith. Because he's not, he's not honest. He's not fair. He's not good. He has to be controlled. Yeah. He's a, he's yeah. a thief. He's That's a right. Convict. He's a thief. He's and we have to take our authority. To kill. Yeah. Steal, yeah. destroy. That's it. Somebody comes in your house to kill you. You're not going to just namby pamby mm -mm. around and say, no. "Well, here I am." No. What What did I do wrong? 
What did I do wrong? Quack. Yes. And Gloria, considering where we are financially in, in the world, what's going on yeah. out there, the things that are taking place, we have to we be more aggressive either. about our faith. You, right. can't, you, you can't sit on the fence with this. That's right. And that's what you taught me, Gloria. That's what you and Kenneth taught me all of these years. Really, what I'm teaching on this broadcast is, is everything that you all have brought into my life. Praise you have God. taught me to be aggressive with my faith. You have taught me that faith takes what, right. what belongs to it. That's right. And this scripture right that's here, good. now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But listen to this. We are not of them who no, draw we're back. Not. We're not. We're not. We are not of them that draw back under perdition, but we are of them that believe to the, to the saving, saving of the soul. soul. We are faith people. Amen. And we take we our take stand it. on the Word of God. We do. And Gloria, bulldog faith. That's good, George. I got the, it. First John 5, 4. Our bulldog faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Bulldog faith is faith that does not quit. Doesn't does give up. Does not hesitate. Does not quit. And, and what we're going to be can't talking about. Can't wear it out. We'll, what was that? Can't wear it out. Can't wear it out. I thought you said can't weird it out. Well, you can't weird it <laughs> out either, but you either. can't wear it out. <laughs> Gloria, we are going to become aggressive, persistent, and determined. That's right. Now, those three words right like there that. over the course of this study, Amen. we are going to look at each one of those in Scripture, and we're going to Good. see people who were aggressive. Uh-huh. They were determined. Good. And they were persistent. Okay. Gloria, I'm I'll so excited about doing this, this with you. This is going to be good. Today is bulldog faith. Bulldog faith. That's what it takes. Ooh. You can't let go under pressure. You can't. You can't. <laughs> no, ma'am, you can't. And that's why, that's, why, that's why this has so much to do with our prosperity. Yeah. We, are, we are actively believing God around here like I have not seen us believe God Praise for God. things. You know, usually we'll have a a project here or a project there. We've got multiple projects going on around this place. I mean, we're believing for every available voice. We have, we have things that we're believing for in the church. But you know what? There is no limit to what you can believe for based on the, based on the development of your faith. George, it, I, I wasn't really listening. I was thinking about bulldogs. <laughs> I was thinking about, they're so ugly. You know, bulldogs yeah. are so ugly. <laughs> Yeah. But I'm telling you, yeah. they're convincing. <laughs> they are convincing. <laughs> Gloria, they really are. <laughs> and that bulldog faith, I can just see a little bulldog just not letting go. Just, mm -hmm. Yep, just That's gnawing it. down on it and will not let go, will not quit, will not give up. Won't say anything different. <clears throat> and that's a perfect example of our faith. It is. Now, are you listening to me? <laughs> I'm listening. Now you've got my full attention. <laughs> now that I've gotten that off my chest. Okay. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> that faith, faith can be developed. It has to be developed. Yes. Because Jesus talked about, where is your faith? They had no faith. Um, they had little faith. They had great faith. You know, I, I want to be I like... I remember yeah. when we had... No faith. No faith. <laughs> yeah. Little faith <clears throat> and great faith. Yes. Yes. And you can get it. You can. You can start anywhere. You sure can. I'm telling you. The development of our faith is something that... I started believing for groceries in the grocery store, that I could pay my bill and I wouldn't have to put anything back. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And you were starting, you have to start wherever you are. Wherever you are, and that's where we are. You have to work. start right at the level wherever you are. And Jesus will help you develop your faith. But the development of your faith comes by hearing the Word of God. That's, that's, that's right. the beginning point of the development of our faith. I think we faith. could say seeing and hearing because you have to put it in your eyes. That's true, Gloria. To get that's it in absolutely your heart. true. And when it's in it, your heart, then it come up and talk to yep. you. But you have to see it and get it in your eyes. Yep and get it in your ears, and it gets in your heart, yep. it comes out your mouth, and it goes to work. That's it right there. I mean, in, nu in the nutshell, that's how it works. And that's how we have to be. We, we cannot lay down our faith. That's we right. cannot take a faith vacation. No, you can't. It, as opposed to the physical body, which the physical body, and, and I work out in the gym. We have a great gym here. And I train in the gym. I have one I've of the. I've heard about it. Oh, you, <laughs> you've heard about the gym. <laughs> well, I I go to the gym. Good I go early in the morning, and I meet one of the security guys here. He's been training me for two years. He's been training me. But Gloria, there is, <clears throat> there's a limit to how big I can get. 
I can't get as big as this room. The physical body was not designed to be that right. way. But the spirit of man, yeah. the spirit oh, of man point, has George. absolutely no limitation on how developed the spirit of man can become. Mm -hmm. And I've watched you and Kenneth, you've done this over the years, you've developed your faith. You've developed your faith from little airplane, well, let's go back. You've developed your faith from, from automobile yes. to little airplane to medium-sized airplane. When I came on the scene, you were flying a 421. That's what you and Kenneth flew and we back. we were glad to have it. <laughs> you were thrilled to have it. And I was so, I was new to this and I was so excited and so impressed because what, one of the first meetings I went to was the Anaheim meeting not in the convention center, but in the California room. That was uh -huh. the meeting that yeah. I was in. And I remember when the meeting was all over, we drove you and Kenneth to the airport. We were going to drive back in the van, but we took you guys to the <laughs> airport. <you> yeah. <laughs> and I remember <clears throat> it was a bright, sunny California day, and I remember you and Kenneth climbing aboard that plane. And I just stood there and watched the two of you. And I thought to myself, that's what faith can do. That's exactly that's right. That's what faith can do. And then you grew from that point to the next level, to the next level. Well, you can do the same thing as well. You can have the in house. In any area. In any area. You can have the house that you're believing for. That's right. You can have the car that you're believing God for. You can, you can grow and develop in your faith. But as I shared with you yesterday, I got at the point of discouragement some years ago when we had to move several times and, and we were not in the house that we wanted to be in and it just was a discouraging time. And the Lord said, I want you to get aggressive about your faith. Get a grip, George. Get a grip. I want you, my, my attitude was sinking fast. And he had that, he had that, that uh, halftime locker room talk with me about <laughs> getting back up on my faith yeah. and, and developing a bulldog faith a bulldog faith. Gloria. They're well, ugly, but they won't let go. They won't let go. They won't give up. They won't, <laughs> they're determined. They're that's persistent. Right. And that's exactly the way we have to be. Now let's talk today about the okay. nature of faith. The nature of faith is, is as a bulldog. I mean, you can describe faith as a bulldog. Aggressive, <clears throat> determined, won't quit. It won't quit. And the scripture that we have here is it growls 1 John. If it has to. It growls. Yes, it does. You, if you ever try, now we have a poodle. We got a little well, poodle. That, there's a little difference. There's a difference there. Mm -hmm. But if that poodle gets hold of something and she does not want to let go of it, she'll bite down and she'll growl. Well, that's it's not the, very scary. Not, not really scary. But, <laughs> but you get a bulldog like that that will bite down on something and you try to take it away from you. And that bulldog will fight you for it. We have to, and I've done this with the church, you literally have to take the word of God, bite down on it, and don't, because the devil's going to try to steal it from you. And you just bite down on it and you don't let go. That's you right. don't quit. You don't give up. And there's some things that we learn. You just have to determine, well, how bad do I want this? Do I well, want to be a wimp? Do I want to quit? Come on. Do I want to give it, it up? Preach it. Keep living in this place I'm living? Come or on. do I want a new house? <clears throat> That's, keep driving this old jalopy? Yep. Do I want a new car? It'll it will produce. Bulldog faith will produce anything that you stay in bulldog faith for. That's right, Gloria. We've been at it a long That's, time. You have been... And, and I've been produced. privileged to watch and learn and apply. Terry and, I, Terry and I have applied this word that we've watched you and Kenneth teach. And we've seen that faith is not, it's not a wimpy thing. Oh, it's it's not. Strong. I looked up the word, the scripture that we had that I wanted us to read was 1 John 5, 4. It says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So faith is the victory yep. that overcomes the world, the world so, and yeah, everything in it. Somebody might say, yeah, but, <clears throat> but I, I'm not a preacher. I'm, I'm <clears throat> just, you know, I just work at a, this that place here yeah. and I, work, I yeah. put gas in cars yeah. and it doesn't matter where you work. That's right. It matters what you do with your faith. That's exactly right. Glory and I've, to God. I know I've had, as a pastor all of these years, I've done hospital visits. And you know, when I go to a hospital, uh, I, I take some advice that, that Brother Hagen gave many years ago, and that was you sit in your car and you pray in tongues before you go into that place and you hear from the Lord. And you know, Gloria, when you go into a situation, you're not quite sure <clears throat> what you're going to walk into, what kind of family you're going to be dealing with. 
but there have been occasions where I've walked into a room and Gloria, faith was in that room. Praise God. Faith was in that you room. You can tell a difference. You can tell a difference. And that person was laying hold on their healing and taking their deliverance. That's the way we have to be. We, right. we have to have Thank that... You. That, t that overcomers taking what belongs to us, being aggressive about it, and having the attitude of a bulldog faith. Yeah. It is bulldog faith that overcomes the world. That that's bulldog right. faith that's working on the inside of us. We believe we receive it when we pray. <clears throat> that's right. That word in the Greek, receive, is to take. To take it. We take it. If you yeah. pray and ask God yeah. for a new car, yeah. or a car, and you leave that place, <clears throat> And then you say, I, I sure would be glad to have a new car. I wish I had a new car. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I sure would like to have a new car. You didn't take it. Mm -mm. You just, you just spouted off something. I believe. But when you leave that place and say, I have it. Yeah. I have that car. Yes, yes, I have yes. the perfect car for me right now. I have it. I take it and I have it. Yeah. And yeah. you talk like you <laughs> have it and you act like you have it and you be thinking about where am I going to put it when it comes home, yes, you know, yes. you plan for it. Yeah. Well, I'm sitting here right now listening to you say this and faith is growing in my heart because of what you're saying. Praise God. What Gloria is demonstrating to us right now is what's going on in her heart. What's on the inside yeah. of us comes out of us. From the abundance of our heart, the mouth speaks. And I'll you have you faith in your situation heart. situation. Yeah, tell me. Was, <clears throat> I wanted a house. Ken could live anywhere yeah. if he yeah. had an airplane, but I wanted a house. Yes. And so the longer I believed for that house, and I started drawing off stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going to have. Mm -hmm. This one. Well, the longer it went, the bigger it got. Yep. But you know, there came a day when I moved in that house. That's right. Paid for. Glory to yep. God. That's right. There'll come a day when somebody will get in that new car turn the ignition on and go to town. Exactly, exactly. If you stay with it. If you stay with it, that's the key, Gloria. And you get your words yep. in faith. You have to keep <clears throat> saying faith words. You can't quit. If you're bleeding for healing, you can't give up. Oh, you oh, had a, maybe you had a sharp pain. Yep, yep, but yep. he said, no, I'm not moved by that. I'm yes. healed. I believed I received my yes. healing. Jesus himself bore my healing and I am, bore my sicknesses and yes. carried my diseases and I am That's the it. healed. That's it. That's it. Somebody <laughs> ask you how you are. I'm healed. I'm healed. Yeah. That's an aggressive stand. That's right. And you know, you don't hear does. that in, in a lot of circles out there. You don't hear that 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 confident faith stand where you take what rightfully belongs to you. And I believe that it pleases the Father oh, yeah. for us to have this kind of an attitude. He has set before us a table in the mm -hmm. presence of our enemies. We need to come to that table and take what belongs to us. Take it with a bulldog grip. And, and right. I'm doing this, Terry and I are doing this right now. It, seem, it seems as if when we crossed over into this new year, Everything ramped up around here. I mean, I look at you. I look at Brother Copeland. I hear him teaching now about faith, going back to the foundational yes. principles mm -hmm. of faith. Something's going on here, folks, that We're we, preparing. at a time when somebody might think, well, they're, they're reaching their 50th year of ministry. Maybe it's time to back off a little bit. Thanks there ain't no backing off around here. No. I'm telling you the truth. Where would you back to? We, we, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, maybe we could slow down a little bit. There's no slowing no. down around here. No. Everybody's believing God. Faith is at an all-time high around this place. And that's what you have to do in this yeah. day, in this hour. Faith is an aggressive force. That's right. Now, that's let me read this. To say it. It's an aggressive force. I looked up the word faith here from this 1 John 5, 4. And faith in the Greek, I'll give you a couple of definitions. It's in your notes, which they're available on kcm.org. Faith is a force that is forward directed and aggressive. It's aggressive. It is. This is the Greek definition of it. It's never passive. It never retreats. It's never backward. It's That's never right. backward exactly moving. Right. And it always, it's always reaching to obtain growing. A, a specific target or a goal. It's growing. It's reaching. It's an active force. And I like the amplified translation of this scripture. This is the victory that conquers the world, even our faith. Our faith is the victory that conquers the world. That's the amplified Amen. translation. That's good. And Gloria, I happen to be... What's, what does that cover? <clears throat> everything in the world. Everything. Everything. 
And you know what? Even as I'm sitting here with you right now, my faith, I can feel, I feel my faith heart pumping you harder. Got faith bumps. I, I got, <laughs> I've got, I mean, it, it, it just, the more you talk about it, and that's why, that's right. like husbands and wives, you, you have to have faith conversations with you in the face of whatever is going on around your household. You have to have faith conversations. Terry and I, we were talking about something the other day, something that was, that was going on in the, in the church, and, and I could feel the conversation starting to spiral downward. So I took the initiative, and I just said, Terry, we need to get in faith about this one. And you know what? We pulled out of that spiral. Yeah, the dive. The, the, dive. the dive. We pulled out of the dive. And that, that faith conversation, we're sitting in the garage with the car running. We just got home and we're talking about this. And we just activated our faith and we just began to believe God for that situation. And Gloria, it turned everything around. Faith That's what faith does. does. That's what bulldog faith does. Amen. And listen, here's a definition. You need to get the notes if you want this definition because I'm not going to slow down. But okay. this is a definition that Brother Copeland gave to me. This is December of 2008 about faith. And he said, faith is a spiritual power born in the human spirit at the new birth. That's right. It is the spiritual substance of things, all things. It is activated by the mouth and followed with corresponding action. Mm -hmm. It is fed by the word of God when that word is acted upon as quickly as you would a word from your doctor, a lawyer, or your best friend. You could say it is fed by the word of God and yeah. it is maintained. Fed and maintained. And maintained by the you word know, of God. That's live good, Gloria. This week on what yeah. you got last yeah. week. Yeah. You can go at it, but it won't be strong. You gotta keep it going. You, you gotta have to keep, keep it gas going. in the tank. That's right. You may have filled up have, last week. But you have but to keep But if it's gone now, you don't have any power to That's move. right. That's right. And you and I have seen people depleted of their faith. And you just have to go in there and just start feeding them the word and getting them back up. But the key is to not get depleted. That's the key right. is to stay strong. That's the key right. is to watch Dish TV, BVOVN, 24 oh, hours a day. Oh, you do it now. The di we the could have done things faster. I mean, you get that. To it's total immersion in the word of yeah. God. And when you t totally immerse in the word, it builds your faith muscles. Amen. It builds faith muscles, Gloria. I know that there are things 10 years ago that we were having a hard time believing for that our faith muscles have developed and grown to such a degree that that's like nothing to us now. It changes your capability. It does. It increases that's you. That's good. And the longer like you that. stay at it, you can take off, believe God for a house. It changes you your capability. You can believe God for a jet airplane, wow. you know, cash. Man, oh man. Brother Copeland. It's the way to go. He, he's believing for... He's believing for... Has he for, got to the spaceship yet? We're, <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. He, he called me on the phone the other day. He called me on the phone. I don't know why he called me in particular, but he called me. He said, he said I want a new TV studio. Okay. And he was down here. He was preaching. What? He was Did doing... Did say, why me? <laughs> he said, but he was down here preaching and he was changing his clothes in between broadcasts and he called me. He called me on the phone and he said, he Is said, George? George, we're going to need to have a new studio. Okay, Brother Copeland, I am believing God with you. I'm exercising my faith for a brand new, he called it a production center. Okay, okay. We're believing, we're believing God for, <clears throat> he, he came back from his trip in 2015 from Africa after being at David Ayedipo's church. Yes. Believing that for is inspiring. a 50,000 seat facility. And when he got to Ray McCauley's church, he was telling the people about it. And I heard him because I was online listening. And I had just got online listening to him talk about this when he said, and we're believing, and I just came from David Ayedipo's church. He has a 50,000 seat auditorium. He said, I'm going to get me one of them. And he said, Eagle Mountain International Church is, is growing rapidly and the church is going to build a 50,000 seat facility. Well, you better get busy. <laughs> <laughs> And so wow. we've been, he and I have been talking about it together. And he said, George, what you need to do first, we need to build a 10,000 seat facility. That's what we need to do first. He said, dig a hole. Do you get a shovel? <clears throat> 
I, I must say, <laughs> Gloria, thank you for reminding me because I need, I just need to go out on the property and dig a hole. Find you a spot. I'm going to find me a spot and dig, uh, thank you for reminding me of that. I take him literally. He didn't say how big a hole. He, <laughs> he didn't, he didn't say how big a hole. He said dig a hole. Well, faith aggressively sees. If you can see it, you can have it. That's right. And there, there are a number of things. Brother Copeland <laughs> said to me the other day, we're sitting around a table. He said, we said, we need another thousand feet on the runway. He's looking at me. Like we the runway he, manager, <laughs> huh? <laughs> I, said, I thought to myself, well, have you talked to John yet? <laughs> but, he, but why is he doing this? Why is this happening? Because our faith is coming up to that aggressive place where it's being developed, it's being strengthened, it's being empowered. And let me leave. That might be because time is short. I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. And I've got to read this scripture okay. to you. Let me just Let's read this it. scripture to you. The aggressive nature of faith. We're not aggressive with each other. We love each other, but we're aggressive when it comes to taking what belongs to us. Yes, Hebrews 11, 32 through 34, the faith chapter. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith uh -huh. subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths yeah. of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, they were made strong. Praise they waxed God. valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. That's the aggressive nature of, of faith. Ephesians 6, 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, where which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And then 1 yeah. Timothy 6, 12, we are told to fight the good fight now of faith. Now let's think about this a minute. Above all. Above that all. That could be the first <clears throat> in importance, but it also could be whatever it is you need above everything above, with oh, faith good, over Gloria. it. That everything over it. Glory to God. Oh, glory. Why that's is that? Wonderful. Because faith works in every area. It does. Above all. Above this all is first, things. most important thing. Glory to God. That's Hallelujah. It, Gloria. That's good. Pastor George is back and he's loaded. <laughs> <laughs> He's got more faith words to give you today than ever. Today it's bulldog faith. Bulldog faith. Bulldog. Bulldog, bulldog faith. Bulldogs we are, don't quit. That's right. They're, they're aggressive. They're aggressive. They're and determined. They hang on. And I believe, Gloria, since we started this ser series a couple of days ago, I believe that that our folks are getting aggressive out there with their Amen. faith. I believe that the, some of them may have been discouraged about some things, but their faith is getting All built up. All kidding aside, you have to have aggressive faith. You really do. Because the devil, you're fighting darkness, you're fighting That's the right. wicked spirit, That's you're right. fighting the devil, you're fighting doubt and unbelief in right. people around you. Right. And if you don't stay strong, you'll give in to it. People are fighting symptoms in That's their physical right. body. Yeah. They're fighting uh, payments that are due that you may not look like hang, they can be word, done. Get that word, get your scripture. Mm -hmm. Put it in your eyes, in your ears, in your heart. Put it in your mouth and don't change. Don't change. Don't Be change like God. Yes. <laughs> don't Be change. Like God. Don't change. Don't change. So that's what we're doing, Glory. We're talking about bulldog faith. We're talking about getting back up on your faith, getting strong, encouraging yourself in the Lord. Faith is a force. It's a creative force. It is a force that moves mountains. It will, it will remove that mountain when you activate your faith. And faith can be developed. It can grow. It can get stronger and stronger and stronger. You know, all, all of the fruit of the Spirit is that way, Gloria. You can That's become right. stronger in love and stronger in patience and stronger in long-suffering. And so in this aggressive faith, all of these notes that we're teaching and, and like what happened yesterday, we only got halfway through those notes. All of these notes are available to you online. All you have to do is go to kcm.org. The information is there for you. George, you're and, a great uh, researcher. Oh, well. Thank you for researching this for I've us. researched you. That's what I've done. You and Kenneth have been at the forefront of my research for this project. Praise God. And you know, Gloria, as I shared the other day, we, Terry and I were in a place of, of frustration, or I was, that year that we had to move several times and the Lord got on me about it. He got on me about it and he said, get back up That's on your right. faith and get aggressive, get aggressive yeah. about it. And all of that that took place in 2002, 
all of what I'm teaching you right now came out of that time. It's been developed over the years, but this is really the first time I've ever taught this on television that we, we have to get aggressive Speaking about it. Speaking of aggressive faith, when mm -hmm. you think about it, Satan has come not to build you up, uh -uh. but no. to steal, steal. kill, yeah. steal, and destroy. Yeah. That's his MO. Yep. That's, he thinks that's his job because he thinks we've got what belongs to him when you get right down to it. He That's lost it. it. He lost it, yeah, he <laughs> wants it back. You tell him that, devil, you lost it. You yeah. get out of my, my, my place, out of my you space. You know, he, it says in Peter that he goes about as a roaring lion. We need to be as the lion of the tribe of yeah. Judah. Listen to the rest of it. Yeah. Seeking whom he may, may devour. devour. He's looking yeah. for the weak link. Yeah. And I'm not yeah. going to be it. I'm not going to be it. I'm not going to be that weak link no. either. Here, I'm. I'm whom he may devour. He yeah, can't he devour, may devour everybody. I'm, I'm going to read that. That scripture just jumped up on the okay, inside of me. I'm going to read that one to you. It's, it says, I can find it here. Yes, I can. It says in 1 Peter 5, it's, oh, this is good. It's good. It's talking about casting all of your care. Now that's good. We can back up and say, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting yeah, all yes, of your yeah. care uh, over upon him for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant. Why? Mm -hmm. Because your mm -hmm. adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour, whom you resist steadfast in the faith. That's what it takes. In Isn't bulldog that faith. To, that's exactly what it takes. That's it. We need to resist the devil. And the, we, we need to maintain that. That's not going to just be every once in a while. Right, right. Every Christmas. That's right. Every New Year. That's right. He's, he's, he, he's desperate. Yeah. If he can't steal it, he doesn't have it. You know, I, I've heard Brother Keith teach this. I've heard Brother Hagen teach this. And that one of the reasons why people lose their healing is because they're not strong enough to keep it. Their or faith. They're not, they're not strong enough. Yeah, that's right, to, because it'd be weakness. Yeah, would it would be a weakness. Yeah. So all that we're saying here is that there is, there is an aggressiveness about our faith that we need to have and that you may be in a position right now where you've been discouraged about something or, or the devil's tried to bring something into your household. And you can literally feel the devil sifting you, that scripture we read in Luke 22. You can literally feel yourself going down on the inside. Get back up on your faith right now. Get aggressive about your faith. That's right. And that's what we're talking about today. That's what this outline is about. I aggressive want to read faith. This, George. Yes, I want ma'am. I read these scriptures. Yeah. This is 1 Peter 5, 6. And this is the Amplified Bible. Oh, good. I'm glad you're reading it Therefore, from the Amplified. Therefore, humble yourselves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, lo lower yourselves in your own estimation mm -hmm. under the mighty hand of God. In other words, to right. obey Him, right. to do what He says, to say what He says. That in due time He may exalt you, casting the whole of your care. Yes, all you of You and it. I ought not have any care that's not already cast. That's right. It ought to already be cast. Casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, mm -hmm. once and for all, that's good. on Him, that's for good. He cares for you affectionately. This is faith. This is what faith does. Mm -hmm. Cares for you affectionately and, cause, and uh, cares about you watchfully. Be well balanced temperate of mind. Be vigilant. Don't be lazy, in other words. Mm -hmm. Be cautious. Watch what you're doing. Right. Watch what you right. say. Right. Watch what you think, because what you think will come out your mouth if you don't do something. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, for that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone. That's not me. Not I'm me. not going to be that mm -mm. person. No. Seeking no. someone, no. seeking some weak person with their guard down, saying the wrong things, mm -hmm. you could say. Mm -hmm. Seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Here's what wow. we're supposed to do. Wow. We're supposed yeah. to be strong. Withstand him. That's good. Be firm in faith. Oh, that's, oh, glory. That's Don't wonderful. be moved yeah. by what's going on, yeah. by what you see, yeah. by what anybody says, by what you feel. Be firm. In, okay, George, here mm -hmm. you are. You're mm -hmm. having a pain. You don't say, oh, what is it? What am I catching? Yeah. What have I got? No, you be firm in faith. That's you right. say, I'm healed by his stripes. 
I'll not have any deficiency in my body That's right. in the name of Jesus. Withstand him. Be firm in faith against his onset. Rooted, established, strong. This is you, George. Rooted, established, strong, immovable, determined. Knowing wow. that the same suffering are appointed to your brotherhood, it's not something that it's uh, throughout the whole body. It's not something that's uncommon right. to man, uncommon. in other words. Yes, you can right. handle this. Yeah. You can do this, yes. George. Yes. You can be strong. Wow. Tell that pain, that disease, that that's lack, right. get right. out. <clears throat> Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory, that's that, good. Thank you. Good? That Thank you. Good. That's really good. That. Amplified translation is so Amplified. Oh, it really is. It's marvelous. I've had this one redone a couple of times. Well, you're talking there about this aggressive faith, and let's hit a couple of things together. In Weak faith, <clears throat> it's not going to produce. It won't. It if won't. If you cut let it, it go, it's it won't gone. cut it. Mm -mm. If you don't let it go, it's still operating. That's right. You know, again, you liken it to the development of a of a muscle. Yeah. That if if a person trains and works out, when they begin maybe they couldn't pick up that thing over there or that particular weight. But mm -hmm. the more they trained, yeah, yeah. then that heavier That's weight good. they couldn't pick up, they're able to do it. That's there right. are things that we are able to pick up. Like for instance, we talked about yesterday, a, a, a 10,000 and a 50,000 seat facility. Well, <clears throat> we've changed in 50 years, in four, the 40 years that I've been here. Yeah. And you, you literally pick up something by faith. And when your faith is developed, it doesn't look hard. You know that God will provide. That's You've right. seen him do it over and over and over again, and you stand on the word of God, and you see that it's going to get you through. There's That's no right. question about it. The, the nature of faith is aggressive. It is aggressive. And one of the scriptures that we use... It has to be strong. It has to be. The devil and all of his hosts and most of the people around you are trying to talk <laughs> you out of it. That's so Calling true. you fanatic. That's so true. Or whatever. That's so true. It's I'm like trying Kenneth. To think of what they used to call us, but it kind of slips from my mind right now. <laughs> Fanatics. That'd yeah. Be, that'd be a start. Extreme. Extre oh, that's it. Extreme. Extreme. They're extreme. Yeah, extreme. we are. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I remember, I remember Brother uh, Copeland talking about the time he was driving Brother Roberts, and Brother Roberts turned to him and said, "People, you tell people will tell you you can't do it." That's right. He, and then he told him the three things to do that he needed to, to find out the will of God, yeah. confer no longer with flesh yeah. and blood, and get your job done. At any cost. At any cost. That's it. Whew. That's Faith what we do. is an aggressive force. Listen to this. This is Hebrews chapter 11. And we read this yesterday, but it bears repeating again. This is the nature of faith. In verse 32 of Hebrews chapter 11, it says, And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith did what? Subdued kingdoms. Glory, yeah. they subdued kingdoms That's through right. faith. They did saying. righteousness through faith. They obtained promises through faith. They stopped the mouths of lions. They quenched the violence of the fire. They escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, they were made strong. Amen. They waxed valiant in fight, and they turned to flight the armies of the aliens. All of this took place by yeah. faith. Yes, that's it right. It did it by faith. And we found out, I looked up the word aggressive, Glory. You can see it there in your notes. The word aggressive means an all-out effort to win. It is bold. It's boldly and relentlessly assertive. Aggressive faith. That's what aggressive faith you is. You know, really, if it's not aggressive faith, it's not doing much. <laughs> That's true. If because it's not, you got a, it's not doing much. You have an much. enemy who is a thief, a killer. He's come to steal, That's kill, right. and destroy. That's and right. That's his only job. That's right. And he wants what you've got. Yeah. And he yeah. wants you. Yeah. So if yeah. you're not, if you're not, uh, if you're not having any, having to stand, yep. you're probably not much of a threat. That's right. <laughs> well, that's true. And, and I think what you're saying here is that we have to stir up our faith. We've got, we've got to stir ourselves up in these things to be able to get over and above the, that attack, that's right. that lie, whatever the devil's putting to you and at you, we've, we've got to wake up our faith and be aggressive yeah. about this and, and take what God has already done for us. Let, let me read to you what George has, <clears throat> the definition George has for aggressive. An all-out effort all to out. win. Boy, that says it, George. That says it. 
boldly That's it. and relentlessly assertive. Mm -hmm. Bold. You don't quit. Forward, pushy, <laughs> militant, <laughs> forceful. Yeah. Who yeah. who are we forceful and pushy to? The yeah. devil. The devil. And circumstances. Yes. Yes. That he's creative. Ready to fight. Tough. Violent. That's it. Aggressive That's it. faith. That's it. A person who is developed in their faith, they're ready. They are ready for anything that comes at them because they know who they are. They know who they are in Christ. Right. And, uh, you know, I think about that story that Brother Copeland tells about Ain't Eilie. Ain't Eilie. Ain't yeah, I remember Ain't Eilie. And how she was, she was in the hospital and they were saying, you need to come, you need to come right away. Eilie's dying. Eilie's dying. And Brother what Copeland, <laughs> Brother Copeland went into low, slow. Yeah. You know, and he, he was with Vanetta, his mother at that time. You, I guess you guys were over there at the house and, yeah. and he, he said, mother, there. make me some eggs. Ain't Ali's the dying and he's, he's, well, he's wanting eggs. eggs. Well, what he's doing is he's going into that place of faith. Yes, sir. And I'll the tell faith you, mode. the faith mode. Well, he went, long story short, he went to the hospital and, and Ain't Ali lived. Yeah. But you know, that happened to me the other day. Somebody called and there was something urgent and, uh, and Terry was, was like, come on, we need to, we need to, and I went into low, slow. I went down into that faith gear and I just sat for a little bit and just said, Lord, what do you want us to do about yeah. this? That's how faith does. It's, it, faith is in command at all times. Faith is in control at all times. Show me somebody who has a bulldog faith developed on the inside and I'll show you somebody who cannot be moved. I'll show you somebody that looks like the 112th Psalm. Evil tidings may come their way, but their hearts are established. They shall not be moved. Faith mode, when I think about the other side of faith mode, mm -hmm. I think about our family. Mm. If, uh, well, if a member okay. of our family, like one, one, somebody who was diagnosed with some serious Ill, meningitis right, right, or something right, serious. Right. Or if they had, you know, if they had an accident. But this one that I'm thinking about was something in the middle of the night came to one of the kids and they had to take them to the her or him, I think it was her, mm -hmm. to the hospital. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we all troop down there. You that's know, right. we might have put our raincoat over our pajamas or whatever, but we <laughs> that's got to true. That that's hospital true. and we that's were right. out there and maybe... Yep. Eight of us or ten of us mm -hmm. were out there mm -hmm. in the waiting room, believing God, yep. praying. I think it was was it what was it meningitis? That or was Lindsay like that. with the men serious. at Christmas that time. Yeah, many years ago. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. so so think about if something comes up, don't panic. Don't start saying unbelieving things. That's good. Go Lord. into faith mode. Mm -hmm. Get on the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Lay hands on whoever it is. Get the healing scriptures. Lay hands on them. Pray That's for it. them. That's it. Go to the hospital. I'm <laughs> telling you, there's no room for anybody else in that waiting room when if one of us is down there. I like in that, trouble. Gloria. Go into faith mode. Yeah. Go down. And That's we should right. really, we should always be in that faith yeah. stand place. By. But on, sta faith on standby. By. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, when when the phone, when a phone call comes in, you're you're not thrown for a loop. You're not no. you're not throwing your hands up and getting all upset. No. I, that's a really good. That's a real. It, it, I try to monitor myself. You know, like a heart monitor monitors the heart. I try to monitor myself, and and you monitor yourself to see if you're in faith. Yeah. And and you can really see if a person is in faith, when the bad news comes and they lose it they go completely berserk and run around the house and say, we're gonna do this, we gotta do that. As opposed to a person who's developed this bulldog faith that just is solid as a rock. Gloria, I want to be that person. I want to be the person who is solid as a rock and I'm not moved, I'm not shaken. You cannot shake me, you can't, devil, you can't do anything that would shake us. Now, if we're, if uh, somebody say in our family, I'm thinking about, an incidence where there was a very serious disease <clears throat> for one, one of the younger children and uh, word went out, mm. so-and-so yeah. has got, yeah. has been uh, diagnosed <clears throat> yes. with so-and-so. Yes. yes, yes, What did the family do? They got it and she's in the hospital. We got it in gear. Yeah, we we got filled it. That's up it. the waiting room. <clears throat> Get your faith in gear. We stayed down there yep. for hours and hours yep. praying and believing God. That's right. She came out of that she place. She came out of it. Oh, well. 
So, you know, you got to be have aggressive faith mm -hmm. when you're challenged. Mm -hmm. We believe we won't be challenged, but when That's we right. are challenged, we have to have aggressive faith. We do. We do. You know, Gloria, we've got a few moments left on this, and we, I'm just so enjoying, we're not even on our notes, but I'm just so enjoying this. But <laughs> well, let me read something. Let me, let me just kind of okay. re, just lightly go over this with Remember, you. Remember faith mode. <laughs> faith mode. Okay. Um, in Samuel, we were going to talk about this. David was aggressive, and this is how we should be where the devil is concerned. It says in 1 Samuel 17, 48, it came to pass when the Philistine, this is page two, okay. when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, David hasted mm -hmm. and ran toward the yeah, army to meet the Philistine. That's what faith does. Yep. Faith runs head on instead of running away from the situation. It runs head on into to, take the, to win the battle. To win the battle, and I am so inspired by what David did. The word "hasted" in the Hebrew suddenly he went headlong with great speed. I mean, that's what faith does. It runs headlong into the lack situation. It runs headlong into the physical uh, situation. It runs headlong into whatever the challenge is. David had that faith. And I wrote this down here. <laughs> and, and again, look, you, look what it says on number two, your note. Read that. The hate, suddenly, suddenly he went headlong with, with great, great speed. speed. <laughs> Glory. Headlong to victory. Headlong to victory. That's yes. what we have to do. Amen. Um, David knew his covenant and he ran aggressively toward the army. And, and I wrote this down here. This is what we have to say. Devil, get out of my way. Mm -hmm. I will either go past you or I'm going to run through you. Either way, I'm going to possess everything that rightfully belongs to me in Christ Jesus. That's right. Bulldog faith does not roll over and play dead. Bulldog faith attacks the problem headlong. And like I said, I think it was yesterday, somebody's going down today and it ain't going to be me. That's good. That's good. It ain't going to be me. And then this last part that I had here, uh, aggressive faith is relentless. It's absolutely relentless. And the scripture that the Lord gave me was Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the profession yep. of our faith without that wavering. That's key scripture right there. The Amplified, let us seize and hold fast and retain without mm -hmm. wavering the hope we cherish and confess our acknowledge of it for he he who promised is reliable and faithful to his word. We have Praise to be God. constant, relentless. Yeah. We have to keep this relentless pressure on the devil. And we do it with our words, our thoughts, our actions, our entire being. We do not allow the situation to put pressure on us. You know, George, we've got, I forget now how many children, grandchildren, parents we have, but it's 30 plus, A bunch. I think, in yeah. the family. Yeah, yeah. And we've had very few times where we've had an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when we have, yes. we get it in gear. That's a good way to put it. I like we that. Get we it get it, in, it gear. in gear. The word passes around. Yep. We, if somebody's had to go to the hospital, I only remember once or twice when somebody was in the hospital, but mm -hmm. there could have been more. And uh, we, we, uh, we, we descend upon we that. We descend. We fill up a waiting That's right. room. There's no room for us. Same thing when when when, when, when babies together. were born. All yeah, the babies, babies were being born. Now we've done we that would a lot just with babies. we would just take over the waiting room and sit and sit and eat and bring pray. our thermoses, <laughs> our cookies. <laughs> We come for yeah. the camp. And if there's anything, and there have been a couple of times, a couple of times with, with babies that there were some issues that we just prayed them through. Yeah, that's right. And we stood in our faith and we just, we didn't just go, oh, woe is us and put our, our head in our hands and what are we going to do? And you've, you've never seen these two do this. We've never, we have never seen that happen. It's always been an aggressive faith. And you know something, we've taken, we've taken a, a, the clue from you and Kenneth that whenever we've called you about an issue or something, no matter what you're doing, you may be watching TV or something, you guys just get on it and get in you prayer over it. And you know, Terry and I do the same thing. The other day we were sitting, we had a long day at the office. We got home and you know, now that we're, we're in our, our latter, great, great latter years, Greater years. Greater years. <laughs> Sometimes, because we don't have kids there anymore. Sometimes we come home, we'll be home at 7 o'clock, we put our pajamas on. Oh, that, and I then thought everybody just, did that. <laughs> we sit on the couch and we may watch TV, but the phone will ring. 
Something's going on. Somebody needs prayer. I mean, we sit there, pause that thing, and we're always we're always in faith mode, yeah. but there are times when, when the challenge hits, and I mean, you roll up your sleeves, and here we go. That's right. And, and we are always ready, always prepared, and we are relentless where the devil is concerned. And you know, I don't think this is a coincidence. We're out of time, but I don't think this is a coincidence. That doesn't happen very often. It doesn't. The devil knows he's spinning his wheels. That's right. That's so true. That's, That's right. so true. And, we, and I believe... We, we get after him. There is, at Kenneth Copeland Ministries right now, faith momentum. Yes. Like I have never Praise seen God. before. Gloria, I've never seen it quite like this. Praise God. I've never seen your husband quite like this. <laughs> He's like a man from another planet. You know, yeah. Brother Copeland, as you well know... he Really? Will, he, will, <laughs> he will be 80 next year. Next year in 2017. Still flying jets. And I believe what we're seeing right now, give me that sign. Give me that sign. Hush I want to show up. them that sign that says we're out. We're out. <laughs> we're out of right. time. We're okay, out of I'll debt. just say we're this. We're out of trouble. We are seeing a That's man. We're seeing a man on the pre pre precipice, precipice. precipice <laughs> of his 80th decade. Yeah. And he's practicing what he preaches. A man who has 80 years of faith experience, and I'm seeing it, and I'm taking it, and I, we are yeah. alive. Right and I now, guess, he's in training on his airplane jet. I, I know, I know, and he's learning how to. He's learning how to fly Wait, a. Were they trying to tell us? He's, he's learning how to fly a seaplane. Gloria, I guess we better wrap this one up. Gloria, we're talking about bulldog faith. Oh yeah, I like that. I like it. Bulldog faith is a faith that is aggressive. It's persistent. It's determined. It lays hold of what belongs to it That's and right. does not let go. It's like that bulldog. When I'm talking about a bulldog, how You know it, why that is on bulldogs? Tell me. Because they're ugly. They're ugly. They're ugly. They're all messed up. <laughs> Their nose is all ugly. They got to have something outstanding. And it's because they won't let go. They won't let go. And that's that's why they were designed that way. They have a protruding jaw, yes. indented nose because, yes. snout, because they bite down on something and they keep breathing until it's Didn't theirs. Didn't know that. You can't, you can't pull it from them. You can't take it I, from them. And that's the kind I of try. attitude we should have. We should have a bulldog faith attitude about the, the Word of God. The devil's going to try to stop it. He'll try to kill, steal, and destroy, mm -hmm. and we stand against that. Sure. Now, before we get into the Word in Luke 18 that we're talking about today, and today we're going to talk about persistent faith, okay. I want to make a correction of something that I said yesterday. I said that Brother Copeland is turning 80 next year. He's turning 80 this year. This Does is his, he know that? He <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think so. <laughs> but what I, the, the, you know, the point that I was making yesterday was the fact that he has been preaching about living to 120. And the reason for that is that with every decade that goes by, with every year that goes by, there's more revelation that comes. Yeah. So we are... Well, he can't do it without me. No, he can and he won't. <laughs> and, you know, the fact that there's so much going on, there's such... I have to tell you, this is my 40th year with the ministry, and I have never seen it like this before. I've never seen such momentum, oh such, God. we are believing for so much at the same time. Not just one I'm project. Short. It's short, and we need to get things done. And that word that, that the Lord told of Brother Copeland, he told that word to him in 1976. Get this uncompromised word of faith on every available voice. And... We had, he, he told me himself, he said he had let that word go and the Lord corrected him, got back on it, and that's when DISH TV opened up. So we are going on every Amen. available voice. As a matter of fact, Gloria, and this is something that Kenneth was interested in because the church, the church uh, services are now being broadcast on shortwave radio. Well, isn't that and that goes around the world. <clears throat> and there are, you'd think that shortwave radio was kind of going out uh -huh. of, of style, but it's not. That's primarily how many nations listen to their the input, and that is through shortwave radio. Praise millions, millions of shortwave radio. Wow. So that's just another voice. So point being is, I believe that we're seeing Brother Copeland entering into a new phase of his life, this new, this, this, this Caleb-like 
phase. Give me that mountain. I want that mountain and I'll take it right now. And that's encouraging. That's good. You know, Caleb said, he said, I am more, he basically said, I'm more on fire now. I am am as strong now as I was at 40 years old. And he was 85 when he was saying that. Praise God. So that's an inspiration to everybody. Caleb faith. That's Caleb kind of faith. Mm -hmm. I like that Caleb kind of faith. Well, today, (laughs) and we'll see just how much we do stick with the notes, Gloria. This has been so much fun. But (laughs) I will remind you that, you know, whatever we don't cover on our notes on this broadcast, you can go, you can download these notes. You can get everything that we're talking about here. And you should and study them. Yeah, study them out and just get them down on the inside of you. We're talking today about persistent faith. And I want to use this example in Luke chapter 18. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 18. And uh, let's do this, Gloria. You have it written down on your uh, page there. Let's just read it from the page because I have little comments that I make as we go through. But this is an example of persistent faith. And I'm going to do something a little backward here. If, If you would, Gloria, look at your second page. I want to give them the definition of persistence. Okay. Persistence. Bulldog faith, faith is a force and it is a determined force. It is an aggressive force. It's a persistent force. And the word persistence is defined as a firm or obstinate continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. So that's that's what faith is. It's persistent. It is firm. And it has an obstinate continuance in a course of action in spite of the difficulty. In other words, that at obstinate word, when, when you're obstinate about something, you're, you're not going to give up until you get what you want. That's, that's, an obst- that's the de- definition it's of obstinate. interesting that that means hard-headed. It means hard-headed. I'm not changing. No. <laughs> I'm staying this way. I'm not changing. <laughs> Obstinate. Well, that's the thing we love about you, Gloria. You are, <laughs> you are determined. You are persistent. I am. You are, you're aggressive. I remember the time you came to preach at, to the staff a few years ago. And, you know, I was just having one of those really long, long days. And you came in to preach. And she preached a message of faith. I sat there and I could literally feel the words going down on the inside of me. And when I was through, when we were through that chapel that day, I had, the Lord had corrected me and said, oh, you've gotten off your faith. You need to get back on your faith again. So faith is is persistent. Faith will not give up. Faith will not throw in the towel. Faith will not lay down and let the devil walk over it. It is persistent. And I like this in in this second definition here. Persistence applies a nonstop, constant, continual, steady, relentless pressure on the situation. It's nonstop. You don't give up. That's right. In faith, you just don't give up. Bulldogs are ugly, but they're persistent. They're they're not. They're not pretty, but they're persistent. That's right. And they keep pressing on. And that's what we have to do. Persistence does not let go or give up until all resistance is broken and the desired result is attained. And the battle won. And the battle won. Say. Yeah, I like that. So there, there's a persistence about what we're doing. You know, Gloria, this is very interesting, but we've been, we have been persisting and, and <laughs> being uh, obstinate, really, in our faith about a move of God in our church. And it yeah. hit, it hit in 2014. In August of 2014, I was in South Africa and I was getting ready to speak to some pastors the next day. This was the last of our two weeks there. And I was just, I'd just gone before the Lord and I said, Lord, what do you want me to say to these pastors? And you know, I had notes, I brought things with me, but it just didn't seem right. And the Lord spoke a word to me like he's never spoken a word to me. He said, I want my church back. He said, you tell them, I want signs, wonders, yes, miracles, that's right. demonstrations of the Spirit, that the gifts of the Spirit. Us. I want that back in belongs my church to us again. And it belongs to Jesus. It does. It does. And so we came back from that trip in that August of 2014. And Terry and I have just been pressing into this and pressing into this. By the time we got back, a move of God had already started. And Gloria, here we are at the time of this broadcast. We're, we're into now 2016 and the move of God has not let up. Praise it God. has continued. And our service just last Sunday, our service went three hours. We had wow. manifestations of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We laid hands on the sick. 
We worship God. We preach the Word. I mean, this thing went on for three hours. Awesome. And the people awesome. just stayed right where they were. Well, one of the things about it, though, is that the Lord instructed me to take the clock down. So there is no clock. Oh, that's neat. There is no clock. That was at a Eagle brave Mountain. step. In e well, that's what he said to me. He said, take the clock down. And I, the day that I took the clock down, Gloria, I, it's hard to describe the relief that I felt on the inside. When we, when they... The pressure. The pressure, the pressure was gone. pressure of a clock. Because for 23 years... Basically, I had, I had lived by a clock yeah. telling me when to stop. And the Lord said to me after we took the clock down, He spoke up inside of me and He said, Now I can train you when I want the service to be over. Okay. I want to tell you what to do. I want to tell you when to lay hands on the sick. I want to tell you how to do this. And Gloria, we've just had a continual move of God. All that to say, we've been persistent about it for all these years. Amen. We've been seeing a time when this, is, when this was going to happen, that we were going to see revival break out in our church. And it just seemed like there were times when I got discouraged and it just seemed like it wasn't working and the numbers started going down, but we just stayed with it and we stayed with it. And now we are enjoying the fruit of persistent faith. It's happening. It's on. And the same thing will happen to you yeah. if you're persistent in faith. And I want to take a look at this I example. New, I got a book title for you. Oh, we've got a book title. Tell me what the book title is. The Day the Clock Came Down. <laughs> <laughs> Everything changed. The Day the Clock Came, came down. down. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's exciting. And you know, it's really, it's really wonderful to be able to do that when we have a guest speaker yeah. that comes in and they'll say, when do, you, when do you want me to quit? And we'll tell them, we have no clock. I we have no like clock. That. And we just opened ourselves. But let's take a look at this, Gloria, and let's go back to our first page. There you are. Luke chapter 18. I want to talk to you today. We want to talk to you about persistence in faith. It Luke says, 18, okay. <clears throat> it says in verse 1, um, and I'm reading to you from the Amplified Translation. We're using the Amplified on this one. So it's, Let me get my Amplified. It's, uh, it's there on your page, too, if you want to follow. Oh, okay. I'll use that. <clears throat> so it says, <clears throat> Also, Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not to turn coward, oh, yeah, faint, like lose heart, or give up. So that's an instruction to us right there, Gloria, that we are to not give up. Vital. That's it vital. is vital. It you is. know, sometimes it takes people years to get, in, like, say, the financial condition they're right. in right now, right. borrowed money and all right. that stuff, and they want out in two weeks. Yeah. It's just probably not. It could happen. It could. But however long it takes, you have to stay with it. One of the things that Terry and I learned about this was the, the house, we bought a house from your sister, and we had it, we renovated the house. We were going through, we wanted to yeah. enlarge some things. Anyway, Gloria, we did it by faith, and we did it by cash. And it took five years to do it. And there would be times when we go over to the house and those same, the same uh, beams were still there that were there the last, the framing was still there on that room that was there last week and the week before. And we just had to keep ourselves stirred up. But you know something? As we did that, there was a momentum that built and the money started coming in and it started flowing. And I'm so excited that we, we actually, the Lord told us, and the house wasn't totally finished, but the Lord said, it's time for you to take the ground, move in. Think about move this, in. though. How long would it have taken you to pay it off if you'd have borrowed the money? We'd be paying right now <laughs> and, and on into, and, and you know. It, it, it would be lots more money. But I think about that. Now, we've been in that house for 10 years, and I walk around that house, especially on Saturdays when I'm getting ready for church, and I just thank God I'm living oh, in a debt-free house. I know house. how you feel. And it's a beautiful home, and it's, it's just, the Lord did that, but we had to be persistent. At times when I wanted to give up, Terry would be persistent, and she'd be the bulldog in it. When she wanted to give up, I'd be the bulldog in it. That's when why we... they came out of the ark two by two. <laughs> <laughs> we need That's two right, together. That's right, Gloria. That's exactly right. That's two right. by two. Uh -huh. And when Terry and I both would get discouraged, we'd call Brother Copeland. And he'd say, oh, kids, just roll the care of that onto the Lord. He you. was so good to us during those times, especially when we were, you know, around the third year. We're still living in a rental property and we're renovating the house. And it takes patience. It does. Well, and you know what the Bible says. Let patience have her perfect, perfect 
work. Perfect work. That's the way you get yep. things perfected. Yep. And he said to us, and this will be an encouragement to you, that in the midst of all of that, I remember we called Brother Copeland one day and we just told him that we're still standing through this. He says, kids, you need to look at the progress you've made. Look at the progress you've made. See how far you've come and yep. don't give up. Don't quit That's on this. Right. And I remember the day that we, we moved into the house. It wasn't totally finished. We moved into that house. Terry had a, a preaching trip that she did in that December of that year. Kelly, who at that time lived right around the corner mm -hmm. from us, she came and got all of our Christmas stuff up and she put up all the Christmas for us. When Terry came home, Christmas was up in her new Christmas house. Christmas time. Oh. And it just was such an encouragement to us. Praise but God. we had to be persistent. We couldn't give up. We had to keep going. And that's what this scripture says. Do not turn coward, mm -hmm. faint, lose heart, or give up. You cannot give up on your faith. You cannot quit on your faith. In that's verse right. 2, let's look at this. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither reverenced or feared God nor respected or considered man. Verse 3. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him saying, protect and defend and give me justice against my adversary. The New Living Translation there says she came to him repeatedly. Now, what we're talking about here, Gloria, is persistence, repeatedly, repeatedly. And that's what, when, when we're talking about coming to God repeatedly, we're not talking necessarily about coming to God, asking Him the same thing over and over again. No, oh. what we're talking about is not, not laying aside our profession of faith, that we say it, we declare it. There are things that Terry and I say every single morning. We declare the glory of the Lord over our day. We say that we, we are expecting our greatest blessing ever today because great grace is upon us all. And we go through, we, we, we speak over our physical bodies. We talk about our finances and we say that and we say it yep. and we declare it and we declare it. And you know what that does? It puts pressure on the devil. That's right. It takes the pressure off of us and it puts the pressure on the devil. It prepares your path too. It sets, that's right. And the last thing, the last thing I normally say when we're making our confession and our de declaration every day is that our steps are ordered, ordered of the Lord. Yeah, by the Lord. And that we- A good man's steps a are good ordered man's, a, by a the Lord. A good man's steps are ordered by the Lord. And I also say that we declare the end from the beginning oh, of this good. day. That's good. And, and it works. It doesn't works. It, it works, but you have to be persistent about it. Yeah. You can't do it for a while and then say, oh, well, I don't want to do this anymore. No, you have to do it. You have to do it every single day because there are going to be opportunities that will come to you, whether there are, there are world shattering events that take place or things that go on in your family. You have to stay strong. And that's one of the things that Terry and I say every day. We are strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You're walking by faith and not by sight. That's right. That's exactly right. That's what you're doing. And, and we, are, we are persistent. Now, and in, you're verse, blessed. in verse four, we are blessed, Glory. We are blessed. In verse four, it says, and for a time he would not, talking about defending her, but later he said to himself, though I have neither reverence <laughs> or fear for God, nor respect or consideration for man, uh, he says, yet because this widow, verse five, continues to bother me, I will defend and protect and avenge her, lest she give me intolerable, anno intolerable annoyance and wear <laughs> me out by her continual coming, or at the last she come and rail me, rail on me, or assault or strangle me. He wanted rid of that woman. He wanted didn't he? rid at of all that cost. woman. I like the New Living Translation of this. It said, "This woman is driving me crazy." That's it. Did it. That's the new living. That's the new living. Well, this woman is driving me crazy. Let me out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see that she gets justice because she's wearing me out by her constant requests. Now listen to That's this statement. This is a statement that the Lord gave me. Persistence wear, wears down resistance. That's right. Persistence, Persistence. wears down resistance. That's right. And we have to decide who's going to wear down. Is it the devil that's going to wear us down with persistence? Or are we going to wear him down? Are we going to wear the situation down and take command of it? Is it our circumstances <clears throat> that are going to mm -hmm. change? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to change? That's right. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change. And he said, this woman is driving me crazy. 
I'm gonna see that she gets justice. She's wearing me out by her constant request. What happens is when we confess the word, declare the word, stand on the word, believe the word, we are resisting the devil. That's right. The curse. It says resist, resist the devil and he will flee. One translation says he'll flee from you in yeah, stark in terror. terror. Yeah. So we have to be persistent in this. And in verse six, it says, then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust sa just judge says. <laughs> verse seven, and will not our just God defend and protect and avenge his elect, his chosen ones yes, who cried to him God. night and day? Will he defer them or delay in helping on their behalf? Now that word crying there night and day, that doesn't mean, oh God, oh God, you got to help me. You got to help me with this. No, that crying out is speaking the word by crying faith. Crying out in faith. In faith. Yes. Amen. In faith. Lord, we thank you right now. You are the provider. You are the supplier. Crying out you the are the scripture. one. You, that's right. You are the healer. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. I am whole. I am delivered. Now, what am I doing? I'm demonstrating persistence right there. Yeah. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what is going on, faith is not moved by what it sees. Faith is not dictated to by what it sees. You dictate to the situation by your constant right. persistence in the Word of God. And I, I, and I look back at certain situations that have gone here, times that we've been in, in financial, uh, got behind in our finances. And Gloria, honestly, I wasted a lot of time at night not walking sleeping, the floor. <laughs> walking the floor, worrying about it. And, you know, eventually the Lord would just really get a hold of me and I'd get back on my faith about it. And now I know, now I know that, that when we run into a, a situation that we, we automatically kick that faith into gear. Right. We get persistent about it. We've been persistent about the church's income over the last few years because we reached a, 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 a level, plateau. a cap. We reached, reached a plateau and we would just declare the word. Terry and I, our staff, we would declare the word. We were persistent with it. And what happened was, and in the year of 20, in the year of 2015, we, we, we are 47% ahead of where we were in 2014. Wow, that's awesome. It's miraculous. Praise it's God. It's miraculous. That is. But we'd gone down in, in 2007 and just kind of, it was just, but we were persistent, Gloria. We didn't give up. We continued to declare the word and we had a breakthrough. Amen. We had a breakthrough and we're having breakthroughs in this ministry. Praise we're God. believing God. We're believing God. Uh, Brother Copeland has declared over us. We're believing for we're believing for an income of three hundred million dollars a year. The church runs about ten percent of the the ministry. So we're hooking our faith up. We're believing for $30 million of that. What are we doing? We are persistent with it. It does not matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many people, pastor, are in your church. Believe God for the wealth transfer. Right. Stop standing in your pulpit and counting the heads and figuring up how much each one is going to give. Forget that. That's ridiculous. You need to move on over into the supernatural and be persistent about it That's and stand right. on the word. And all of us need to do that. And and so verse eight, I'm going to finish up with verse eight. It says, I tell you, God will defend and protect and avenge them speedily. However, when the son of man comes, will he find persistence in faith on the earth? I and say yes. I say yes too. Glory to God. I say yes, Gloria. There will be persistence. There will be Glory persistence. We've had a great week. We've had George. a great week, Gloria. Glory this is good. I have so enjoyed doing this with you. This is we wonderful. I've enjoyed it. You're easy to preach with. Well, Hallelujah. We are talking about bulldog faith. And we're talking about how people can, how you can build up your faith, develop it to such a degree that no matter what yep, the devil right. brings to you, you are strong, you're determined, you're aggressive, you're persistent. And we're not talking it's about... It's a consistent thing. It's though. consistent. You got to yeah. stay with it. <clears throat> well, I remember a, a woman of God saying, inconsistency lies the power. In, not inconsistency. Not inconsistency, but, but in, in consistency. consistency lies Power. So when we are right. constant, and that's the thing that I observe about you and Kenneth, all of these 40 years, I've known you 41 years, but, but I've worked for the ministry for 40 years and just watching the consistency of the two of you, just it watching. It gets to be a lifestyle. <clears throat> it does, doesn't it? It gets easy after you do it <clears throat> yeah. 40, 30 years. No, it doesn't take that long, but it gets to be a habit. 
First of all, you decide, I'm not talking any unbelief. There We're you not go. saying any unbelief. Yeah, yeah. We're not saying anything that we don't want to come to pass. Mm -hmm. And you have to have certain things that you lay out like that. Yeah. I'm staying, I'm going to get in the Word every day and keep my face strong. That's right. Certain things right. that you do to stay. And you can be persistent and you can be full of faith the rest of your days in the earth. That's exactly if right. If you'll <clears throat> do the right things. And I've watched the two of you you really have never backed down from this. It's just gotten no. stronger and mm -hmm. stronger and stronger around here. And we called, we called Brother Copeland the other day. He was on the treadmill. He said, he said let me turn Brother Hagen off here. Yeah. <laughs> so he was, he was feeding on the Word. <clears throat> and, and with the two of you... That's what you have to do. <clears throat> you just inspire us to do that. And in this discussion that we're having about, about bulldog faith, Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, no matter what is going on in your life, you get back up on your faith right now. Right. You believe God, you get in the Word, you hear the Word of God, you listen to the, the materials that we provide from Kenneth Copeland Ministries, and you get your faith strong because in this day, in this hour that we in, it He's is vital, it. it is important. Right. And <clears throat> you know, you see things in the stock market and things that go up and down. With, with God, there is no change in the kingdom. The kingdom is on a constant rise. And it says the violent take it by force. We take the kingdom of God. That's we take everything does. that God has for us. And in this Friday, <clears throat> this Friday broadcast, we're talking again about persistent faith. And we started yesterday, Gloria, by talking. I've got so many notes here. So much that I wanted to share with you. We, we were talking yesterday about the, the widow woman. Oh, yeah. The persistent widow woman. And if I can just kind of go, go back ahead. through that again. In Luke 18, there was an unjust judge that he, he did not give in to this woman that was coming to him that and asking him. That was his first him. mistake. That was his first mistake. <laughs> and... <clears throat> In verse 3 of Luke 18, there's a widow that in the city that kept coming to him saying, protect and defend and give me justice against my adverse adversary. And then it says in verse 4, for the time he would not. But then later he said to himself, I don't have reverence or fear for God or respect or consideration for men, but yet because this woman continues to bother me, in today's vernacular, we could say, she's driving me crazy. She's driving me crazy. I've got to get rid of her. <laughs> she said, because he, he, she keeps bothering me, I will protect and avenge her, lest she give me intolerable intoler annoyance and wear me out by her constant coming, or at the last, she shall come and rail on me or assault or strangle me. <laughs> and, you know, we, we talked about the phrase yesterday, Gloria, about persistence wears down resistance. That's right. And we have to be the persistent ones. And so the unjust gave in to her, judge gave in to her, and we read, we're picking up with verse 8 from yesterday, I will tell you, he will defend and protect and avenge them speedily. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find persistence in faith? Or you could say there, will he find persistent faith in the earth? Yeah. And the answer Well, he will if I'm still here. Yeah, he will. Glory he will. God. That's he what will. you have to determine. I'm going to be persistent in faith. We have to determine that. That's so right. if you look on your paper there, we're going to this persistent faith part two which is, where is that? It's right there, Persistent Faith Part 2. And I wanted to remind, remind all of you that all of these outlines are available online for you right Georgia now, the information. The research. It's all, all, where, where are we now? 240, <laughs> 44 days, 45 days, oh, somewhere yeah. in there, of, of, of outlines that are available on prosperity alone. And we need this to prosper. You've got to have... You've got to have the Word. You have to have a faith determination and to do it. And not just have it, but act on it. And act on it. Be Say doers. It. Do doers it. of the yeah. Word. So in persistent faith here, we're just kind of reviewing what this woman said. She did not take no for an answer. You do not take no where the Word of God is concerned. You bite down on that word. You bite down on your healing. You bite down on your prosperity. Whatever it is, you get aggressive about it and you don't take no from the devil. That's right. He's the devil the says you'll never be debt free. He's come to talk you out of it. He, that's exactly right. nothing belongs to him. So if he can't get what's yours, he doesn't have anything. That's right. 
But we say, you're not getting mine. You're not touching That's mine. right. He tried to do that with Jesus in the wilderness. Yeah, when Jesus was there, he just kept trying to offer him, him this. And Jesus would say, it is written. It is written. It is That's written. It is written. Yeah. It is written. Yeah. He finally said, it is said. Amen. And it said, the devil left him for another time. He just, up. but Jesus' persistence wore him down. This woman did not take no for an answer. She was relentless. She was insistent. She did not stop until she got what she we wanted. We can do that. Women can do that. Women, <laughs> women can, can do that. Men can do it too. <laughs> yes, that's right. And we have to be. She refused to give up. I'm telling you today, refuse to give up. That's I don't, right. it doesn't matter what kind of situation you're in the middle of. Refuse to give up. You get back on your faith. You get back in the Word of God. You get these materials that we're offering here. Or you go online to kcm.org. There's a lot of free material on there that you can order or listen to. But you get the Word down on the inside and you stir yourself up and do not, you, ref, you be just like this woman, you refuse to give up. Her persistence wore down, her, her persistence wore down the resistance of that judge. He didn't get to her, she got to That's him right. and everything changed. <laughs> she did. She tenaci tenaciously, stubbornly, and persistently kept coming, and she would not quit. And now yesterday, Gloria, we talked about this definition of persistence. It's a, you read the definitions there of per persistence. What's that telling Firm you? Firm or obstinate continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. Mm -hmm. You just don't quit. Mm -hmm. Nope. Persistence applies nonstop. <clears throat> constant, continual, st steady, relentless pressure to a situation. Mm -hmm. Persistent, persistence does not let go or give up until all resistance is broken and the desired result is attained. Persistence in the faith. Persistence in the if faith. If you're believing right. for something that didn't come when you thought yep. it ought to, yep. you don't quit unless you don't want it anymore. That's right. You don't quit. You never quit. You don't quit. I watched you and Kenneth when the Lord spoke to you and said, believe for the citation 10. I don't know exactly how many years it was from the point that he I'm spoe to sure you. Either, but it was a while. It was a while. It was Because we, we were not borrowing money, we were paying cash. That makes a big difference. Exactly. And there was... In a lot of ways. We don't talk borrow we around here. We didn't pay for it two or three times mm -mm. with interest. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. And I remember year after year would go by when Brother Copeland would, would play the video yeah. of the citation yeah. 10. Believe in God. And, and in that video, remember it was Amazing Grace, singing the song Amazing yeah. Grace and watching the plane. We did that year after year after year. And I remember one particular convention, I was sitting in the partner meeting and I was watching this again and the thought crossed my mind. I thought, Lord, when is that gonna come? When is that gonna come? And I sensed the Lord just inspire me. He said, keep going, just keep, keep believing, keep believing. And then of course we were all here the day that we, we acquired that airplane and flew it oh, here hallelujah. on the property Victory. and landed that plane yeah. and, and celebrated with our partners the fact that that thing was overcome. And you know, you'd think that the world would be really excited about an entity believing God for an airplane debt free. <laughs> they, they get upset. Well, why not? Why are they upset? Because they don't well, have they one. They didn't get the thousands of dollars in interest. <laughs> That's right. That That's exactly right. Get. That's exactly right. Or and all, the point that I'm making about the ten, the citation ten was: you stood mm -hmm. in faith, believing God, and you. We were persistent about it. We did not give up over it. I remember when we had another, a smaller jet here. And we could have sold that jet and put the money towards the 10, but the Lord spoke to Brother Copeland and said, sow that into another ministry. And it was uh, a seed. It was a seed. It was a seed. So you have to really, you, you, you know. And sometimes when you're dealing with Brother Copeland, you just have to hold your breath and say, <gasps> <Yeah. laughs> and obey. You know yeah, what I that's mean? right. But it's, you know, he's got, I, I must say. he but it works. He he's has, proven it out. He has, and he has the most <laughs> inspiring Faith, he does. He really does. I've never it's seen amazing. anything like it. And it's something that I, I aspire to. I do. I aspire to that kind of faith. I like to, I like to say things to Terry that, you know, she's usually the one. She's very much like Kenneth. She's, she is, sometimes she'll look at me and I see that face, you know, and, yeah. and the eyes. 
but and she'll she'll challenge me with something. George, let's believe for this, or let's let's give our house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some little idea like that. And, and I must say, Gloria, I, I'm not walking in pride over this, but I ha there have been several times when I've, I've said things to her that she'll go, hmm, I'll have to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we must be persistent in this. Yeah. We cannot let go. We cannot give up. We cannot throw in the towel. And we have to have that, that obstinate continuance in that course of action that we do not give up. And I'll give you a couple of examples here. Here's one in point C down there. This is Luke 11 in the Amplified Translation. It said, Jesus said, which of you has a friend who go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine who's on a journey has just come and I have nothing to put before him. And from within will answer, do not disturb me. The door's now closed and my children are all in bed. I cannot get up and supply you with anything. I tell you, although he will not get up and supply him anything because he's his friend, yet because of his shameless, shameless. persistence yes. and insistence, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. Now, isn't that something? We were shameless to learn persistence, persistence and, and insistence in this. Yeah. We go to the next page there, Gloria. Here's the. Um, Here's the situation with Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was persistent about his healing. And it says in the New Living Translation in Mark 10, 40, uh, 7 through 48, when Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then it says, be quiet, many of the people yelled at him, but he only shouted, shouted louder, <laughs> son of David, have mercy on me. What was he doing, Gloria? He was persistent. He was persistent. He was tenacious. He did. He wanted his sight. And it says in verses he was 51, not going to quit. he was not going to quit. And in verses one and 52, Jesus said, what do you want? What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said, my rabbi, he said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go for your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see and he followed Jesus down the road. He just wouldn't quit. He wouldn't quit. He wouldn't give up. And Gloria, that's inspiring to me. It is. That's now, inspiring. Now, when you start out to believe for something big like jets and houses and even cars, you have to just decide, I'm here for however long it takes. I believe it won't take mm -hmm. long, but I'm not mm -hmm. quitting. I'm not giving that's, in. I, here, here, that's what you do yeah. when you believe, you receive, when you pray. That word, take it. We exactly. know that. That helped me a lot. If I want something uh, that, you know, where it's a situation you'll have to believe for, I take it when I pray. Mm -hmm. I keep it till I get it, mm -hmm. till it's manifested. If it's a car, that's it's right. a house. That's right. I'm living in it. I'm driving it. I'm flying it. <laughs> in Jesus' name, you don't quit. Glory to God. You say, yeah, but it's so slow. How long does it take to pay off a 40-year mortgage? 40, yeah, 40 years, years. <laughs> if you can do it. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's just, you just you know, here's it a, becomes a way of life. Here's an interesting revelation that the Lord gave me about time. Time can, either, you can even, you can decide whether or not time will work for you or yeah, against that's you. Right. And when a period of time goes by, what are you going to do with that time? Let's say you are believing for that house and time is going by. What are you doing during that time? Are you complaining? Are you griping? Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Are you being like I was when we were, when we were frustrated? We didn't have, we had to move out of the, uh, the house that we were, the rental house and move into your house. And I was frustrated with that. Not that we came to your house. It was a wonderful experience, but I'm like, I, I want, want to, my own house. yeah. And the Lord got on me. He says, I want you to get aggressive about your faith. What are you doing with your time? And, and here's what the Lord showed me. He said that if you will use your time wisely, you can use it for your benefit. If you'll take that time that you're standing, and that's what it is, it's a stand of faith. 
It's a, it's a persistent, determined stand of faith that you don't get off, but you stand firm and you just stand there and you don't move. You stand there and don't let the devil intimidate you at all. Don't give up. And he's, don't, don't give up. Coward. So whenever there is a time lapse that's going by, I've made the decision, I'm going to get in the word. I'm going to listen to the messages. I'm going to use that time. I'm going to confess the word of God. Say, say, I'm say. going to declare it and I'm going to use that time. It will be a faith builder for me. That's right. Right. As now, opposed what, what's to what's going to happen? The devil's going to figure you out, and he's going to say, "If I challenge him, him, he's just going to get stronger, yeah. and he's going to eventually get it anyway." This is a losing situation with George. That's right. That's <laughs> right. He did it. He did it where the devil oh. was concerned. Jesus was so right. tenacious and persistent. And he just kept saying, "The devil would say something." He just look at him and say, "Well, it is written. It's written. It is it's written. written. That's it is what written." We ought to and do. that's what we have to do. Right. Devil, it is written by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Amen. Devil, by the stripes of Jesus, or by the word of God, it it is written that He meets all of my need to the full according to all of His that's riches right. and glory. And you just get downright obnoxious in the spirit. That's right. Are you know, have you ever been? Stay with it. Have we ever been around somebody that's been obnoxious and they just, they just. Same thing over and uh, over. And uh, over, uh, and over. Uh, we can be that way. That's you can right. be that way where it's the called, devil is concerned. Let's use persistent. I it's think so much better than obnoxious. Okay. <laughs> We're persistent. <laughs> persistent. In, in We're name. persistent. Hallelujah. And what do we got? Two minutes left here. I'll, I'll read a couple of things. Okay. <clears throat> in in the incident with the widow woman and with Bartimaeus, he got up. He got fed up with being blind. You know. There's just a point where you have to get fed up. Yeah. I am fed up with this car situation. I'm fed up with this money situation. I'm fed up with whatever it is that is standing in my way. And, and the same thing with these two, they got persistent with their faith. Yeah, that's she true. was persistent. He wouldn't take no for an answer. He didn't care who was standing around Jesus and he didn't care that he was yelling either. I'm getting to that man. I'm getting to my need. And he was not about to shut up until he got what that's belonged right. to him. And that's, we have to be that way. Well, we start out with one thing that is absolute truth. When we believe we receive based on the word of God, mm -hmm. we're going to get it. Now, the devil might talk, yeah. talk us, try yeah. to talk us out of it. Might look like it's taking too right, long. Right. But if you don't move off of it, you're going to have yeah. a manifestation. Yep. And you said something very important, the phrase you said, based on the Word of God. That's right. Whatever you see in the Word, you can have. Whatever you see in the Word, you can be. Whatever is in the Word belongs to you. We just have That's to faith. access it by faith. That's right. Declare it and receive by faith from God. Take what belongs I to worked us. I on that. I started believing God for a house and we live, well, I don't know when I started, but I remember mm -hmm. when we were in Tulsa in the little rent house. That mm -hmm. I really got mm -hmm. high behind, you know. And um, at that time, I had to, I mean, I when I had so much, I had enough money. This is all I had. Yeah. I had this certain amount of money. And I I was praying, when I went to the grocery store, I was praying tongues that I didn't have to put anything back. I mean, I'd pray. Yeah. Now, this is when I started believing for mm -hmm. a house. Mm-hmm. So, well, you can't even buy groceries without <laughs> using your faith. <laughs> and, but it, I tell you, I wouldn't let go of it. You I didn't wouldn't let go, let go. It. and it came to pass. Well, it took a few years, but how long does it take to pay off a forty-year mortgage? Yeah, that's right. I'm so glad we didn't borrow money on oh, any of these buildings. We'd we'd still be fighting we'd still, those payments. A, Jesus, glory to God, yes, Lord, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, <laughs> and our provider. He is our provider. We're okay. out of time, George. Okay. Well, we'll have to be right back then. We'll come back and see you in a moment. <laughs> He said, I want you to become more aggressive with your faith. How do we develop aggressive faith? With the Bulldog Faith Package, the broadcast messages on audio or video, the full study notes with bonus material, audio files of Kenneth Copeland's faith series, and the corresponding study guide will help you learn how to build your faith to overcome any obstacle and receive the results you need. You can take a firm stand and never back down. The world says it will never happen, but the spirit of faith says all things are possible to them that believe. Doubt says you'll always fail. God's word says there is victory in Jesus. Other voices yell, let go, back down, give up. 
Bulldog Faith responds, I am fully persuaded and I will not quit. Bulldog Faith is bold, assertive, relentless, forceful, persistent, and determined. Your faith can become that unstoppable force that succeeds in every faith endeavor. Bite down on God's word and don't let go. Use your Bulldog Faith. Request your free copy of the Bulldog Faith Package today from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Call 800-600-7395 and take advantage of this free TV offer. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland are making this extensive study package available to you free so you can have fully persuaded faith and receive what God has promised you. Request your free Bulldog Faith Package today. Remember, one per person, please. The way you begin your life of faith is by making Jesus the Lord of your life. Gloria, that's where it all begins, isn't it? That's what happened to you. That's what happened to me. And that's what gets you out of the curse into the blessing. Oh, there you go. Where you can receive the rest of it. Is that it? That's the that's the rescue. (laughs) That's the rescue mission. That's it. And I'll tell you, if you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, today is your day. And it's so simple. All you have to do is confess Jesus as Lord and He moves in on the inside of you. Say this after me, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Take my life. Take my life. And do something magnificent with it. Do something magnificent with it. He is my healer. He is my healer. He's my deliverer. My deliverer. And I receive Him this day. And I receive Him today. Receive right now. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus Himself. And He will fill your life. Thank you, Lord. Listen, if you've done that, we've got some materials that we want to send you. A great book by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. He did it all for you. We have brochures, how to study the Bible, reading through the New Testament and Proverbs, uh, the Psalms and Proverbs in the New Testament in a year. All of these things are available to you. All you have to do is ask for them and they, we will send them out to you. I'm Chris Neer and this is my wife, Kathy Neer. We've been married for 26 years now. It's this coming week. So I've been attending the Believers' Conventions every year for at least myself for 26 years. And Kathy's about 30. I get every new book that comes out that Kenneth has. And when they send you the partner letter, sometimes they put little bookmarks in there, but they have confessions on them. So that's something like in the morning I get up and I, I just read through all my confessions. I mean, it's not like it's, I'm just reading. I mean, my heart is in this. I pray over the horses before I get on them, and that's just what I do all day long. I'm praising the Lord and repeating all these things I've learned. This horse was young. She wasn't ready to be out on trail rides or anything. All I was getting on her for maybe 20 minutes at the most, and then I was putting her away. And for some, I have no idea. Either I touched her wrongly with a foot or something. And next thing you know, I was on the ground. But I went to get up and the bottom of my leg was not moving. And I went, "Uh uh-oh, something's wrong here. And I thought, okay, here I am out in the pasture. So I just started dragging myself to the barn. I kept thinking, okay, if I can get to the barn, there's a phone there. So I just started dragging myself, but the bone kept trying to pop up. So I was holding the bone down and dragging myself. Took me about four and a half hours to do that. Just to go, what, 125 feet. Kathy Neer was in that field for several hours with a broken and twisted leg bone until a neighbor finally heard her cry for help. So he called 911 and he called Chris, and plus all that time I was saying, body, you will not go in the shock. My blood pressure is going to be perfectly normal, and for me that's 110 over 65. And my resting heart rate will be 65, you know, but I'm going to be fine. So then the paramedics came and they're doing all what they do, you know, taking your blood pressure and your temperature, and he went, oh my gosh, and I went, what do you mean, oh my gosh? He said, well, your blood pressure's normal. Your heart rate is normal. Your oxygen level is great. You're not in shock. I said, well, of course not. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Well, most people that have that type of injury um, and lays in uh, a rural area in the field for four hours usually bleed to death as a rule. And 
for four and a half hours being out there, she was being washed over. Surgery was performed to repair the traumatic break, and the hand of God was evident to Kathy and Chris throughout the procedure and the recovery. Even the surgeon was well pleased with the results. After the surgery, he said, now you're really perfect. And he said, but I could not have done, done that to your leg if it hadn't been that your, your bones were in excellent condition, your muscle tone was in excellent condition, your arteries were in excellent condition. That's what he told me. He said, I couldn't have done what I did if that hadn't been that way. And you know, I've been lifting weights and working out for 30 years and claiming my youth is renewed as the Eagles. But see, I learned all that from KCM and all the teaching and coming to the conventions. I'm not gonna leave this earth one day sooner than God wants me to because it's taught me how valuable I am. It's taught me how to change my words to think differently about renewing your mind and that life and death is in the power of the tongue. What can you do today? How are you? Well, I can walk my three, four miles again. Um, I can use my treadmill. I can use all my exercise equipment. I have started riding a horse again. I can wear my high heels again and go to church dressed the way I like to go to church. And people go, you're wearing high heels. I said, well, of course, I'm healed. That is so amazing to know that Kathy, after she was thrown from that horse, it took hours for the paramedics to get there, and then it took a long time for the rehabilitation, but she stood on the word. Right. She literally stood on the word. She was persistent, she was yeah. determined. She had that bulldog faith. And Gloria, that's an inspiration to all of us. The that thing we... you gotta think about mm. is she already had that faith in her. Oh, she did, she that's good. She had put it in. Yeah. She was yeah, ready for yeah. anything that came. If she hadn't yeah. had the faith in her, she wouldn't have been able to do yeah. it, most likely. But we, we stay faithed up. That's right. Not That's just up, like Marilyn up. Hickey told Terry and me one time, she said that it used to be like the peaches that they would can and put down in the basement. And her grandmother would say, go down and get some peaches yeah. from the summertime. And in the winter, she'd go down and get some peaches. She'd open it up. It would smell just like it was the day she canned it. She said, you have to can the word. That's good. That is excellent. For whenever you need that word. Uh, you know, you need word every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Listen, we are so thankful for all of our partners, by the way, who, who oh, support yes. this ministry. We thank God that you are involved with us in all of the projects and the things that we are doing. And I just want to let you know today that the word of God works. And when the word, oh, when man. you do the word as you have been doing and you sow your seed and you sow your seed today, listen to the result of this in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, the Amplified. God, listen, this is a word for you. <clears throat> God is able to make all grace, every, every favor, favor and, and earthly blessing blessed. come to you so that you may always and always. under all circumstances and whatever the need, be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support, furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. I think that'd make a good book title, Always Having. <laughs> always Having. Always Let me write having. that one down. Write a book. Always Having. Yes. So Father, we pray over our partners and friends right now and thank you. Thank you. As God. they sow seed Bless today and as they have always giving. Always Having. Always, always having all sufficiency in all things yes. that they are furnished in every good work. And Lord, we are we are, have bulldog faith on Thank this scripture you, together. We agree with them right now. Every bill paid, every debt removed, yes. and every need met according to your Praise riches and God. glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you glory for that. To God. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. amen. Now, Gloria, that-, that I think uh, you ought to go around saying that. What? Always have. I'm always I, having. I always have. I'm always having. Always I'm having. Always having. And I'm furnished I'm in abundance. Always. Yes. For amen. every good glory work. To God. Okay, go ahead. Okay, well, the, the uh, Chicago uh, Victory, uh, Living Victory meeting is going on. Starts today. Brother Copeland is going to be there preaching, preaching, preaching. And so good. we encourage you to be a part of that. Listen, we're looking forward to seeing you on Monday. We know that Jesus is Lord over everything yes. that we're doing. This is Gloria Copeland and George Pearson's reminding you that Jesus that is, is Lord. Build your faith in the Word daily. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory at kcm.org. 
Be sure to download your free copy of the study notes at kcm.org notes and receive all the scriptures, prayers, and key teaching points from each broadcast. Use the notes for your own personal study or to share with family and friends. Whatever's been held back in your life is going to be released in this meeting. There's something that happens when you assemble yourselves together with believers who believe the Word of God and who believe. Put your faith into action and join us for one of the world's most powerful faith events today. Attendance is free. Register for the 2016 Southwest Believers Convention and launch into your greatest year ever.